Welcome to another episode of Anyone Can Cook. In the market today, I stumbled upon ingredients that are always given and never given the second glance. The two main ingredients in our recipe is something that's always overlooked and nobody gives a second chance at giving them an effort to being the main star of the dish. So today, I decided we are going to cook this as the main dish and we are looking at the bamboo pith which is the bamboo spear and the heart of palm. These two ingredients always become a second choice and it's actually very good for vegetarians. In this world where everyone wants a healthier choice and is very conscious about wellness and mindful living, these two ingredients have the flavor and texture profile that can be achieved like meat. So come follow me in this kitchen. We're gonna finish it with a malungai. Malungai meaning moringa juice. And of course, we'll have some crabs that will surely make the star of the show yours. So in the next couple of minutes, come follow and journey with me as I'm gonna do two takes on the Asian rendition and a European rendition of these two star main ingredients and I'm very excited today because it's a little bit complicated but if you see the process and steps that come with it you'll be wowed how easy how fast 15 minutes you got something on your plate <music> out in front of me is a plethora of spices and two main ingredients that we're gonna work with today we're looking at the bamboo shoot which is right here and if you look at it found it in the local market and I stopped in my tracks and I said this is what we're gonna cook so if you look at the bamboo shoot it's got a, a texture and a firmness that's almost silky and this is where I have fun and you always taste this in most Chinese dishes, but in this, in this recipe, we're gonna make it the star of the show. And the next ingredient that's going to wow us is this. From far away, I'm sure it looks like a bone, but what it is, this is the heart of palm. So it's usually used in, in local uh, language lumpia, uh, Chinese lumpia, um, things that kind of just become fillers because it's quite dense and hard but if you do the slow cooking method and it stews for long and it cooks and roasts you're gonna get this firm plump texture almost like meat but it is not meat so quite magic so we're just gonna breeze you through um, the ingredients we're gonna use today we're gonna do two main frames. One is gonna be with curry um, for the hot of palm and for the bamboo. And the counterpart is the European, which is mushroom. Mushroom and butter, but of course. Um, quite simple, you'll have something with coconut and curry that's going to stew and roast. It's gonna have full flavor, a little bit spicy, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of um, all this exotic spices so i have here some coriander seeds some bark some bay leaves um, some anise some clove all of this goes into the asian flavor ingredients so what i'm going to show you two same ingredients two different dishes one asian and one european so that you can appeal to who you're cooking for and thus being found in the market and I'm not gonna tell you 
<clears throat> something like this will cost you 30 pesos, 20 pesos if you can haggle in the local market. So it shouldn't be expensive, but it should be full of sophistication and full of art, and which is precisely what we're all about in the show. Um, next ingredient that I love and I use everywhere is fennel seed. And these fennel seeds have a, a beautiful aroma. And fennel is quite European, so this is going to be the contrast to our coriander. Of course, the salt, the pepper. And the one ingredient I'm going to reintroduce and that's going to kind of like jumble up the flavors just because it's Asian. I'm going to use malungai and the European counterpart uses basil. I'm going to make this into my own pesto. And this pesto is going to be um, hopefully not bitter because we're just going to blanch this and it's going to go through a sieve and it's going to finish so flawlessly in your mouth that you're going to go, why didn't I think of that? But of course. Um, a lot of the ingredients I'm using for the Asian side also have coconuts. Uh, there's a lot of these components and the curry that's going to be blended, infused, roasted, and stewed, and stewed into a concentrate. So come join me as I'm excited to show you the possibilities of so many things. Two different ingredients cooked two different ways and quite amazing in presentation. It will blow your mind and also, it's quite interesting on the palate. So come follow me, guys, as we get into the kitchen. So in the cooking process, you're supposed to start with the most hardest ingredient or the, the ingredient that's going to take a backstage. And you work towards the main so that you can work on the sauces first. So this is what we're going to do. I am boiling some water, plain water, and I, I'm going to do my malungai pesto. Pesto meaning like um, not so thick, but I'm going to actually make it liquid and watery. So I'm gonna, just going to blanch. The word is blanch. I'm not going to cook it. It's just malungai on its own. If I eat it, it's bitter. It's got this acidity that doesn't just sit well and overpowers in the flavor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the water and I'm going to just drop the malungai from the tree. And what it is, it's just gonna blanch. Blanch is like you just wanna make sure that when it goes through the heat, it's not going to get black. So that's what I wanna do. I'm not gonna boil it, I'm gonna blanch it. Okay, there's really a difference blanching and boiling. So I just want to keep the color green and nice. That should be enough, I'm happy with that. Okay. And it's in a state of just absolutely fantastic green. And it's really simple. It's just like the, the very basic of creating a, a paste liquid. Um, I'm just going to grab the garlic and the salt. What I'm using here is this ceramic knife and that just makes my life easier so I don't need to be too careful because I don't want to cut myself. Ceramic knives are for vegetables and very easy um, items that you don't want to oxidize. So it just doesn't, you just know which knives work best for you for the ingredients. Okay, so I put two cloves of garlic Put some salt. I'm gonna get some of the lemon. I want the rind inside. And the lemon and the rind, and I can smell it. It's divine. Quite fun. And then I'm gonna get Extra virgin olive oil. It's just gonna do 
maybe one fourth cup, one half cup, no more olive oil if it's pure cold press, you are in perfect condition. Simple like that, just getting the sauces ready. Oops, okay, get that lid inside. And I want it to a fine paste until you get all of this to kind of command a viscosity or you get a pesto. Where I'm at, it's a little bit thick if you look at it. Come take a look. I'm gonna add a little of the liquid. in order to give me what I want into like, almost like a soup base. Okay, let's take a look. Yep, this is almost where I want it to be. It could go a little bit further down the line of getting a fine paste, but I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit. And of course, anything you do, you need to give it a taste. Flavoring. The two cloves of garlic, they bite. Um, I feel it needs a little bit of uh, more rind, so I'm gonna go at it. And everything is to its taste. You want something... So what I've done is I'm finishing the entire rind of one whole lemon inside to give it that brightness. Mmm. Sits nice in the mouth. Who'd have thought, right? Malungai pesto, but of course. Malungai soup, but blended, but of course. So that's, I'm happy with that. And what I'm doing now is I'm getting a, another pan prepared to work with for our heart of palm and these two beautiful babies. So what you want to do with these ingredients is that I have um, a hot pan going. And if you look at the heart of palm, it's got so many layers and so many crevices. And to tell you the truth, we can use the whole thing, but I kind of want to use the best parts. And the other parts you can use for your uh, fill fillers, but I'm just gonna use the middle part, which is, they would like to say, the heart. So I'm gonna, just gonna take away first crust if you want to call it the crust and I'm left with this right I'm left with this so if you look at it I want equal size when you are thinking about presentation everything needs to be even and you're gonna see how we stack this um, against each other in the same method like this if you look more or less the same right so this is where we're going to go at it. We're going to start with the same roundness, the same diameter. And I have a hot pan and I'm going to get some butter. What we're going to do I get the butter and the butter I want to actually go on a bernazette. Bernazette means that you want the brown to come out rather than it just melting and this is Bernouzette so where I'm going to go with this get the heart of palm and seal it
seal it and caramelize it. That's it. And you see the butter has this like browned, not fully burnt, but just browned enough that you take out its clarification and it adds another dimension in the flavor profile. While we're at that, I'm gonna let that sit. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna allow that to, to sit and brown. So I wanna sear the sides. If you look at that, I'm just gonna take that out because I got the browning, the caramelization out there and I'm gonna let it sit. And while I'm on the other side, I got my coconut on a simmer. What I'm gonna do next, in the next pan, so I have a hot pan going. I'm gonna get some butter. So what we're doing in this one, we're going to get our curry in this slot. If you look at the profoundness and the change of color of the heart of palm and the bamboo shoot, it's quite phenomenal. Slow cooking and getting the burnt color that we want, but without having the butter burn. is a tricky process. So this is where you want to go with a burnozette again. I'm going to get curry powder. And this is about two tablespoons of curry powder. And that's going to send an aroma. And I get some coriander, cloves, almost like a garam masala mix in there. Oh, do you smell the perfume and aroma? It's intoxicating, intoxicating completely. Right, and there we are. I'm gonna get some um, onions. get that layers out of the dirt don't need that in our lives and that's gonna go in there as an addendum just we want to soften and sweat the onions along with the spices to go in there you can see it's cooked through And I'm gonna take from this lot where it went through one butter clean into another flavoring butter with a curry. And this is really the process. You can immediately do it there, but what I've done is I've sealed first with a darker buenozette, which is like a different caramelization compared to the flavor. So what I'm doing, because I'm showing you two different calibers of cooking, I'm gonna take the heart of palm and one bamboo pith. So this one is just searing itself out. Oh, let's be fair, let's give two bamboo pits. 
to the curry. And while we're in this section here, it's searing. I'm going to rehydrate some of the mushrooms that have been going on and ongoing right there. So this is already a seared, sealed another pot to just rehydrate the mushrooms. So these are porcini mushrooms and they're used in the Mediterranean. You can use fresh mushrooms, um, shiitake, all of that works. So that's gonna go like in a rehydrating to rehydrate all of that and a little bit of salt. So I wanna create like a porcini broth. It's kind of interesting like um, broths and when you use all these cubes are the easy fixes but you can make your own broth fresh vegetable broth, mushroom broth. And I really like to do things with freshness because it comes out and takes out all the fullness of flavor. While I'm at that and waiting for the broth and everything to caramelize. Look at that. I like the color. I want the color to come out because two of these ingredients don't have flavor. We need to create the flavor from the technique of cooking and which is why we want it to taste like meat. We want to brown it. We want to seal it. We want to get soy. We want to get the herbs and the spices, which is why this is the most incremental part of cooking is the technique. So here I am investing time and letting it brown, but I'm not keeping the heat on high. I'm making it slow and steady and in life, Slow and steady always wins the race, doesn't it? Well, that's just my thought anyway. So here I am just turning at it until I get the righteous method of getting it browned on all sides. Quite fun. So I'm gonna check in this bit. Oh, wowee, look at that. Quite happy with how this is turning out, guys. Um, the flavors of the spices that we put, which is the curry powder, have cooked well with the, the two ingredients. So, as you know, I've been boiling the coconut. Fresh coconut milk. And there's really a difference from using fresh and this is the first press of the coconut. Oh, I can just smell this. This comes out. And what it is, I'm going to let it sit and simmer. Ooh. And I keep an eye on the other. So, because I cut such a big chunk, this is why I have so much broth. And I'm going to just let that sit and simmer until it juices, until it shrinks, until it absorbs all the liquid. And we're looking at a slow cooking method. And the slow cooking method will take about 30 minutes if you really wanted to do the slow, slow, slow technique. Um, but equally, this could get cooked in 10. And it's still getting its firm effect. Well, I'm thinking that's completely sealed. I'm gonna put that aside. While I work on, let me just close this top. While I work on my porcini mushroom. And the porcini mushroom, if you can take a look, all of it is getting rehydrated. So everything that is dried up have become um, in volume times two. So I'm going to use this as my base, and this base is going to be is is and it's what's going to give the flavor of 
our second entry, which is um, bamboo pith and the mushroom-based heart of palm. So while we're at that, I'm going to take the same pan and I'm going to just roast the fennel seeds. Just cook it, you know, very easy. I want the flavor to come out. These ingredients, they're all like sleeping until you have to awaken them. So this is what I want to do. And if you can smell the aroma of where we are in this room, it's like, it smells like aniseed. You know, ouzo, and it's got this flavor that's like, you can't quite distinguish and it's very European. Um, and it's so distinct on the nose that you'd be like, give me some of that. So in the meantime, while that's cooking, I'm going to also throw this in so that whatever has not been cooked through because it's such a thick chunk. I'm looking at it and it looks like it's six diameters and that's still going to take a while to cook, right? So I just want to make sure no, nothing is left uncooked because I want anyway all those ingredients to flavor and I'm just gonna get some garlic in there I just get it toasted and I get the garlic a little bit pan fried you know very easy to get all those flavors out when I'm there I'm gonna throw it into the broth gonna sit and I don't mind because that's butter and all of that is gonna go inside the broth that is cooking in its own juices to achieve us this flavor that we want mushroom earthiness this is the European vibe that's going inside this dish. And if you look at it, it already resembles almost like a meat-like quality. It kind of looks like bone marrow, to be honest, which is why it's so deceiving. Now, when we do the taste test, you'll figure it out who's gonna win this game. Because I, I said, I'm gonna do an Asian version and I'm gonna do a European version and then let the audience decide, right? So why not? While I'm at this, um, I'm going to boil some water. I have crab and of course I'm doing purely vegetarian so that those that are only purely vegan will understand but I like some texture and seafood is always a good idea. So I'm going to get some crab and I'm going to just take the, the meat out of it to kind of coat the dish um, of our curry because crab and curry. <laughs> So I got this beautiful crab that I found from my supplier and they said, man, just take the whole lot. So it was too good to resist and I had to get the whole lot. Um, I just needed a crab and I need the crab just for the meat um, to accentuate because our main highlight um, is the bamboo and the heart of palm. But who doesn't like crab with curry? But of course. So I'm just boiling some water that is seasoned and I'm just gonna dunk the crab in boiling water. How's that? Because I just wanna keep it as simple and let them dip it into the curry when that's cooked, right? So this crab I'm looking at, I think is maybe about 600, 700 grams. Uh, it's colossal, preposterous. Um, big as my hand, right? No, maybe not. But come on, as long as my hand. How fun is that? So I'm just going to dip that into the, um, the water and that's going to sit in there until it boils fully and I just want the meat of that crab while we wait for the other components. Make the heat higher in order for the sauce, whatever liquid agent is going to concentrate in flavor as I reduce its stock. Um, what's going to happen? is that I'm just upping the, the process of cooking. In the same way, I'm aligning it to when the crab is done. So you see what we've done first, if you go through the method, right? So if you look at that, I'm getting to a reduction phase. 
Reduction means whatever liquid broth that you're making, let's say it's in one half cup, I want to reduce it to a concentrated flavor of one fourth cup. No, even further down, one twelfth of a cup. I want it that when you have one spoon, all the flavors explode in your mouth. And this is what, um, well, the chefs never tell you, but I'm telling you, to those that want to do um, an elevated cooking presentation at home. I know there are blogs, I know there are recipes. It's so different to know the, the method preparation on TV. <laughs> so we're quite having fun and I'm looking at both ingredients. If you can side by side by me, I'm, my, my nose is just up the hill. Um, because what's more stronger is the Asian profile. Um, a lot of the European ingredients are delicate, balanced, finesse, refined. And then you have Asia. That's just, what am I tasting? Like your eyebrows go up, it shoots up the roof. I haven't even put chili in there, right? We're not even talking about that. So let me tell you, um, this is definitely stronger in essence, but not everyone wants stronger. Everyone, somehow, my husband likes delicate. My husband wants balance. My husband wants cream. My husband wants, you know, so I have two different um, mainstays um, according to your guests and who you're going to serve it to. My children for sure will not eat this, but all my Asian palate friends, this is theirs. Um, I'm just taking a look. Take a look with me, the European version if you want to call it, the mushroom rehydrated mushroom bamboo pith. If you look at them, you can't even distinguish which one is the bamboo and which one is the heart of palm because they start to look alike. But you see, the distinguishment will be in the flavor when you cut both of them. And that's quite interesting. Um, no one's talked about it. Because if you look at that, that's quite grainy, um, very porous, and you'll have the, the bamboo more refined. I'm ready to taste, actually, but I know I'm not there yet. But um, I'm just gonna taste so I know how far to reduce I didn't put any salt mind you in this stock you know I'd be happy leaving it like that but I'd like to get it more concentrated so um, I'm gonna give it two more minutes and I'm gonna finish it in the oven guys I'm going to Take this. Because it's European. Grate some Parmesan. That's gonna go on top. That's gonna be left to gratinate. See, on its own like this, it's already creating this very fine line distinguishment of meat. And you're like, it's a vegetable? I'm like, yes, it's a vegetable. Um, if you look closely, this is going to go in the oven one minute on gratinate mode. Gratinate means the heat is only from the top. So we just want it crispy and crunch on the top, right? While my sauce is reducing, here we go. I'm going to put it under and it's going to create a caramelization. That should be good to go. And I'm going to taste the porcini. Mmm, so good. I think I'm gonna just add a little salt. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna finish. You know how the French do. They finish always with a dollop of butter. Why not? Please, if you're in the healthy mode, up not. But I feel it needs this creaminess. I don't wanna put cream, so I'm just gonna put a dollop of butter, okay? That's gonna create this emulsion. It's gonna coat and it's gonna thicken the sauce. Take a look. This is where I wanna get this sauce on this emulsion. Okay, I'm, I'm getting having this flusters because that is so good and concentrated that I almost bit my tongue because I was so sure that my curry would beat this sauce. And then now I'm having second guesses. So where we're going with this, 
If you look, because I boiled it, right, you don't have the colors, but you still have this neutral brownish. And I'm going to let the sauce reduce. What does that mean? I'm going to allow it to go on higher heat. Look at that. You can't even distinguish which one's the palm and which one's the bamboo. This is actually palm sugar made from the palm plant. I need a little, with curry it's very tricky and people don't get it. When you do the curry powder that you buy in the grocery, you first method you need to cook it through. Cook it with onion and garlic and then as you put the liquid stock, I know in different methods you're supposed to um, add salt but um, or fish sauce. The fish sauce has to go on the end because I'm now getting to a point of I want to reduce. I want to reduce to concentrate and this is the tricky part. It could be too sweet or too salty. It right now has no flavoring ingredient other than the coconut and the curry powder. So if you look at it, it's reducing so much, it's concentrating. If you look at my liquid, it's getting thicker and thicker. Um, I like my curry a little bit salty, um, but I still need to taste the sweet. I don't want the sweet overpowering, so what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna measure. <laughs> I'm going to measure. So I'm going to do um, one tablespoon of Thai fish sauce. I find the Thai fish sauce is so much better than the Philippine fish sauce. Um, and that's just me, but a lot of people would agree. I want my hint of spice just, in, just enough that it's not burning my mouth. So I'm just gonna put a pinch. When I say a pinch, and that's already in the, the cooking space, so that's going to explode in there. And then I'm gonna put one teaspoon of palm sugar. So I'm gonna continue until I'm happy with, with it. and it gets browner and deeper and the color and the concentrate gets golden I'm gonna give this a go where I'm at nothing overpowering everything is balanced right now after this stage you're gonna you're gonna want to get into the stage of just squeezing a little bit of lemon just to get the perk up freshness right And I do this over my hand because I don't want the seeds in there and I'm too lazy to um, have to select as it's going through its finishing stage. That's all you need. So I'm just making sure that I got my my <laughs> malungai pesto where I want it. So this is where I want to get it to. Um, you can make it finer, you can make it more liquid or more green if you want to call. But I'm quite happy with that. And now we're going to check on our... Okay, take a look. Our crab has achieve the colors we want. So it stayed in there a good six minutes. I actually only want the claw, to be honest. And that claw is gonna go in a dipping liquid. I'm gonna finish and put it back in its sauce while I check on Come follow me. We're here on to check on the one that we left with the Parmesan cheese. 
if will you look at that guys if you can smell what I'm smelling oh it's hot this is where we're at we're in the 15 minute mark we're gonna check on our crab gosh that's a beautiful smell so this crab Look at that, so well done. Just boiled to perfection. I'm just gonna let it sit. Oh, even so hot. And I want to actually remove the leg because the leg is what I need to accommodate my presentation. So I just want to get a little crack in there for its meat. Kind of lost it in between, but that's ready. Here we are, ready to plate. I'm going to take the sauce. I'm going to take it's still cooking in its own juices, which is what I want. It's just, it's beauty for me, you know. Um, it sits on a trilogy. On that trilogy, I'm gonna get this. And this is where the art happens. Just sits there. And as I get the reduction liquid, it's juices, it's sauce, it's paste. as concentrate as I want it to be and it just sits on top and as it sits on top you'll find the spillovers below and it's on its own I'm gonna have this arch as it falls off the edges I'm gonna grab crab and get it ready as it sits as an addendum not the main star of the dish and I'm gonna finish it with sauce just around its edges What this is, is the composition of a heart of palm, um, a bamboo spear pith that have been reduced in stock and curry. And this curry actually is so concentrated in flavor. I could make it a sauce, a fine liquid, but because I wanted to show the distinguishment between the flavors of the malungai pesto and the curry, people can have their odd choice of choosing whether to pair it with the pesto because it's two different kinds, right? Um, and of course, the crab is just a little play and a little bit of magic on the mystery because crabs are always the main frame of um, a dish. This one is just going to be like an intro. So look at that. That's yours to understand and comprehend. And I'm going to plate my other dish as we sit and look at that almost like a dry roasted mushroom sorrel or uh that has just allowed itself to to earth with um 
the mushroom with the Parmesan cheese, which have which sits in there somewhere. Oh gosh. I start to think this is gonna be my favorite, but you know, let's have the audience taste. So the sauce has become a Jew. Jew meaning J-U-S, okay, not J-W. Jew means a concentrated, almost liquid reduction. So how about that? Wellness in two plates, two different ingredients. Who would have thought, right? Restaurant grade, so simple. Um, I'm quite proud and kind of loud about my expression with certain Asian ingredients, low cost, high quality um, presentation. And everyone well, is sick of eating the damn chicken. Everyone is sick of eating a beef shank. Come on, like, kind of experiment with your flavors, right? So this is me. Kate Duchanko and Zani with Anyone Can Cook and we're bringing you Philippine ingredients and Asian ingredients to a whole different level, a whole different presentation and come on, will you look at this? Yep, yeah, it's not meat um, and has full, full flavor and you wouldn't even feel like you missed out on life and that's really what it's all about. We're taking everything to the next level, progressive, dreamy, fantasy, unrealistic come on let's re-question reality we we are sick of the basic things so i don't want molecular um, i don't want chemistry and additives i want full flavor from the flavor of the ingredients so this is what we brought you tonight um, so now you're gonna have to watch me eat and think that you can cook this home but you can 15 20 minutes is all you need um, four different kinds of ingredients. So simple. You can find it in the local grocery market. And keep having fun like I am. Thank you for joining me until we see each other again. And I hope you like this episode. Uh, please follow us on Instagram um, at anyone can cook. And this channel broadcasts in so many different channels. So come follow our links. Come find our recipes, get curious with me. Nice to see you again.